Well, our 99 Golf is back. We delayed the repairs last time due to money constraints and, and time factor, but it has a injection timing code. If you've seen the other video, the timing is set perfectly, so that isn't the problem. And the timing solenoid has been replaced already, and that didn't help anything. I can get no adjustment in timing by pulling the fuse or the output tests in VACCOM. So I'm pretty confident that the timing is not changing. So we're going to take the injection pump off and take the injection pump apart and see if we can fix it, see if we can identify the problem. If not, it'll probably end up with another injection pump. And I just wanted to show real quick that that trouble code's still in here. So I'm not making a video on how to R&R an injection pump. That would be pretty time consuming to make that video, but I have gotten pretty fast at R&R on the injection pumps, and let me show you how. Based on what I know about this, is the timing is adjusted by a piston that is in here, between here and here should be a spring on one side and the piston should move freely back and forth and that moves a roller inside to adjust the timing. So we'll take that apart see if we can see anything obvious wrong with it. By the way, this car runs just fine. I think I showed that to you in an earlier video and it will just crank for a long time before it starts. Well, there's the spring. there. Well, I'm back from my interruption, and I'm trying to explain how the computer controls timing on this and what the mechanical parts need to do in order for the timing to work. And you can see here this piston is outwards, and if I push it down, it moves out there the other side. And if I push this down, it moves that out the other side. That means that this is at least free, and it should be able to move back and forth but I need to see if this is able to affect the timing and the way this thing works is the computer controls the timing through these wires going to this solenoid and this solenoid uses hydraulic pressure uh, the pressure is actually fuel pressure inside the pump that is made by the uh, supply pump in there the same pump that draws fuel from the tank is used to make pressure for to pressurize the inside of this pump and that pressure goes from here as the computer commands it into this uh, into this passageway you can even see the route it takes right here if I push it down you can see the passageway where it comes through 
and it pushes that down a certain amount in order to affect timing as much as it wants. And the way I would confirm, I don't know if this is the end all test for every one, but the way I would confirm that this is actually affecting the timing is it should rotate that when I push down on that. So if you'll watch this hub while I push this down, you can see that it is able to affect the timing. Now based on what I've read, it should affect it about 12 degrees, and I'm not going to go through the hassle of trying to measure how many degrees. I just want to see that it moves when I push this back and forth. Now, what I can see is this piston's able to move. It's not jammed up. It's not cocked. It is able to move full travel down and all the way up. And what I'm also able to see is it does affect the position of this. So that means it is probably affecting the timing. So I guess I need to pull this solenoid out and go from there. Wouldn't it be amazing if it was a bad solenoid and the guy replaced a bad solenoid with a bad solenoid. Hope that isn't the case. But I guess let's get this solenoid off and take a look there. Now the solenoid cannot be changed in the car. You, you think every time you do it that you can just pull this cover off and change it, but the bracket that holds the injection pump sits right here and it will not, it's, you cannot change it. Well, I don't see anything wrong. That O-ring's there and looks good. Kind of seems like there should be an O-ring on the tip of it, though. Obviously, I don't have everything in the world memorized, but I'm pretty sure that should have an O-ring on the end of it. And down inside there, you cannot see an O-ring. So maybe the guy had a bad solenoid and he replaced it and lost the O-ring? I'm going to take another injection pump apart and see if it's got an O-ring on the tip. I have some cores laying around and I'll use one of those to do some R&D. Well over here we've taken this injection pump apart and there's no O-ring on the tip, but there is an O-ring down inside there. I'm wondering if this is his problem. Unfortunately I'm going to have to uh, get an O-ring, which I think I have one in an injection pump reseal kit and put it in that injection pump over there and try it and that's going to be a few hours labor to get that thing back in the in the car and timed up and run it and I'm not 100% confident it's going to fix it but we'll give it a try here's our o-ring Not going to video the whole process of putting this back together, but I will update you as soon as we get it in the car. I just want to point out that this washer goes inside the piston here. It's just there so that the spring doesn't wear against the piston itself and it wears against that washer instead. And make sure that all these parts that are going in here are super clean. And fortunately, I can install this the same way I took it apart. Okay, engine all back together and started. But let's see if the code reoccurs. So there's our original code, 
we'll clear it. And it did not reoccur immediately. But from memory, it took a little bit of driving for this code to reoccur. So that doesn't mean anything. I could go for a test drive and it could reoccur. Okay, after we cleared the codes, nothing reoccurred. But that doesn't mean much on this car because it would take a mile or two of driving for this code to reoccur before. So let's check fault codes one more time. Nothing reoccurred. But if you remember, I demonstrated with the output test how uh, this car should make a clattering noise and then it should go away and make a clattering noise and then it should go away as the computer cycles the timing solenoid on and off. As a, as a test to tell whether or not it's working. And I even demonstrated with another car that it was working, but on this car, there was no change whatsoever. So we'll do that test again and see if it's fixed. And I don't know if you can hear that from here, but there's definitely a pitch change. Driven this golf for a while, and let's see if the code reoccurred. No code, that's good. I'm going to call it a fix. Okay, I just got back from driving this Golf with the uh, injection pump timing code, and it does seem to be fixed. With regards to the output test, the computer turns the timing solenoid on and off during the output tests, and you should hear a difference in the clatter of the motor, because as the timing advances and retards, there's a clatter noise. And so you should hear the clatter come and go and come and go as the computer commands it on and off. Uh, this car, there was no change in output tests at all. I showed you a comparable car and, and it changed and had clatter noise and no clatter and clatter and no, cl no clatter. Uh, we pulled the injection pump apart. The piston was free to, to changes the uh, slider inside the injection pump that changes the timing. And so that wasn't the problem. I, but when I pulled the solenoid out, the O-ring on the end of the solenoid was missing. And so putting that O-ring in seems to have fixed it. If you learned anything from this video, then uh, click that like button. Feel free to ask a question down in the comments and subscribe to my channel and visit my website at www.kansascitytdi.com.